This video is on model theory, uh, so this is going to be on the basics of model theory. I want to talk about some things about uh, some model theoretic things on the channel. Uh, basics of model theory. Um, so model theory is kind of interesting. Uh, I guess most logic is interesting because uh, they kind of have this chicken and egg problem where you don't know what comes first, kind of like, what, so, so okay, so let me just say, you'll understand what I mean once I just say this, is that uh, throughout this discussion, I'm going to assume that we're working inside uh, ZFC, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to develop logic, and we're going to develop logic using, you know, assuming that we have, we can talk about sets and functions and everything. Um, okay, that's pretty standard, that, that's what people do, okay? Um, Okay, so let me kind of say what, what, what model theory is and what we're going to do. Um, again, th so there's kind of two parts of uh, any, any state of logic. There's, uh, there's the semantic part and there's this syntactic part. Syntactic is this purely formal part where you kind of uh, build up symbols and the rules for the symbols. And then um, uh, the semantic part is where you try and assign meaning to these things. So... Um, so let me kind of give the, the basic idea. Uh, I'll just draw a little diagram here. Uh, so what we'll start with is we start with a signature. Okay. And what this is is just really uh, something that encodes the symbols that you allow. So we're going to be doing things that are first order that you allow. We're going to be doing things that are first order. So it could be like, you know, uh, you know, these are going to be your functions, relations, you know, constants, right? Uh, and this is going to be, you know, times uh, one, uh, zero, maybe, you know, plus things like this. Okay. Um, from the signature, there are kind of two things that you can do, right? You are going to, uh, you're going to develop structures. Uh, so these are semantic things, uh, and then you're going to develop formulas. So these are more, um, uh, these are, uh, so, uh, so these are syntactic again. Uh, so these are, this thing is things you can say, can say, uh, with, uh, symbols. Um, and, okay, so here in, in structures are, um, uh, so assignments of meaning to the symbols. Okay, if you hear that in the background, that's rain. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but... Uh, there's a lot of rain going on. It's just like super miserable here. Okay, so um, okay, so we have signature from the signature. We have structures and then we have formulas. So this is the language of formulas. To do this, you have to build up these things called terms. We'll see this, and then uh, inside the formulas, you you can take a subset of formulas, and these are theories. Okay, and so these are a set of like axioms that you could have. Okay, uh, with that being said, let's just kind of uh, move forward and we'll do we'll do signatures first okay so let's define a signature so a signature uh, is a tuple sigma consisting of constant symbols uh, of the signature, function symbols of the signature, uh, relation symbols of the signature. Uh, so then there's this arity function. There's two arity functions. One for the relation symbols and one for the function symbols. Okay. So this is going to be a mouthful, so I'm just going to do this as, uh, so this will be C sigma, F sigma, R sigma, 
Okay, and then I'm just going to call both of these guys Arity. Okay, um, these are all sets. So, C sigma, F sigma, R sigma are an element of sets. Okay, and then um, Arity, so, so er, my voice just cracked. That's, okay, so the Arity for the function symbols is a, a map from the function symbols to the natural numbers. So this tells you how many inputs it can have, or you should think of it that way. Really, it's just a function. It has no meaning to it right now. So right now, it's like we're making random stuff without any meaning to it, but uh, it will have meaning. So my natural numbers are going to include one. I'm going to do this American thing. Okay, so this is what a signature is. A signature is this blah, this, this syntactic blah, right? It consists of some sets and some functions. Uh, what we're, we're going to do is, is we're going to build, so when we, when we do theories, right, uh, when we talk about familiar structures, we're gonna, they're going to have signatures associated to them. So let's just give some examples real quick. Um, so the signature for rings um, okay let me say something before we go back here so this is um, this is one sorted so this is single this is what's so called single sorted so sometimes your signature is going to have const like a bunch of these so you're going to have multiple sorts. So like um, a sort a sort is a, is another set where you can do this and sometimes you, you encode it in multiple sets. Um, uh, a good example of, of this is valued fields. So in valued fields you have um, kind of a residue field sort and you have a, 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 the value group. So sometimes you want to include, you, you know, you don't just want to talk about the field, but you want to talk about the residue field and you want to talk about the value group. Well, these, the, the, the residue field and the value group aren't the members of the same, aren't the same members of the field. So sometimes you need to add extra function symbols. So like, so like, let me, let me, let me, let's talk about this for a second. So in the signature for rings, um, so the constant symbols, I'm just going to do a C and omit the sub sigma. Uh, we're going to have zero and one. F is going to be uh, plus uh, times, um, and then we're going to have this minus symbol, and then the relation symbol is going to be uh, the the empty set. So there's going to be none of them, and then the arity for each of these, the arity for the function symbol here, plus uh, times, and the arity for minus. So this is one. This is two. This is two. Okay, so here's the signature for rings. We have just two constant symbols. We have these function symbols, and then we have these relation symbols. And the first order formula, so these are things like for all x and y and blah, 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 we're going to be built out of uh, these, these, uh, uh, these symbols. Okay, um, so if we wanted to make them ordered rings, so how do I do this and make a color? Oh, there we go. Uh, if I wanted to do ordered rings, um, so we would get rid of this here. Uh, then we would do the relation symbol would be this one instead. Okay. So if we wanted to do ordered rings, so we, we could have a, a ring with an ordering. Okay. Again, I haven't really assigned, I haven't said this is a ring, and I haven't said that they satisfy axioms. These are just the symbols you need to talk about rings. Um, there's much simpler examples. Um, you don't, they don't need to be so complicated. Uh, so, for example, you could, you could just do groups, or you could just do graphs. So, for example, for the signature for graphs, for graphs, okay, let's do like this, okay, there, here, you, you're just going to have no constant symbols, you're going to have no function symbols, and then, so I'm thinking of graphs as just being encoded by the vertices. So here, there's just going to be a, a single edge relation. So this will be the incidence relation. Okay. 
and we'll, we'll be thinking of it as taking values on uh, on the edges. Uh, so th this the area is just going to be uh, two. So so uh, yeah. So I'm sorry. It's just going to take values on the vertices. So you plug two vertices into this thing, and then it's going to be it's going to give a thumbs up or thumbs down depending on whether or not um, it's true. I mean that's in the that's in the structure, but right now it's just the symbols, okay? So we're assigning no meaning to them. Um, note here that I've only included the vertices for the graphs. Uh, there could be a version where I, I, I had a multi-sorted version where there was something for the vertices and for the edges, um, but we'll not talk about this in this video. Um, okay, so uh, I, I said that we had this signature um, and uh, now we need to talk about formulas, okay? So, uh, so, so languages, or so formulas, formulas. So our goal is to build, a uh, build a, a set of strings um, L sigma, so these are going to be the formulas, uh, so the first order for a signature. Okay, so these are going to be the formulas that we can talk about. Again, this is all syntactic, okay? So, um, so this thing is going to be built up inductively. Uh, so this is the the idea is to build this idea uh, build up these strings uh, strings inductively um, from so-called terms so this will be T sigma um, and Okay, and then the idea to build the terms, we will also build uh, build the terms inductively. Okay, so um, to do this, we first need a set of variable symbols. So V is going to be a set of variable symbols. So I guess the language here, I wrote L sub sigma here. This also depends on the variable symbols. Okay, that's that's not too important. Uh, so this is just going to be a set of variable symbols. So right now I'm starting the construction. So this is a set, just a set, okay? Um, uh, terms, okay, so now I said that we're gonna do terms. So um, there's kind of like a little subsection here. So the construction of terms, uh, construction. And then we're gonna use the terms uh, of T sigma. Okay, first of all, there's kind of gonna be a base case Okay, so the base case says that uh, C, these are the constant symbols, are going to be contained in T sigma. So we're going to throw those in. And then we're going to throw the, the, the variable, variable symbols in. Okay, so we have constant symbols, we have variable symbols. Okay, and then there's this inductive step. Which says the following. It says that... So for all functions, so if, okay, so if, let's say, f is a function, okay, and uh, with uh, arity n, and if we have some terms already, so if t1 through tn, uh, are already terms, then we're going to say, we're going to throw this new guy in here. 
we're going to throw this new term in here. So by making a new thing. So like in our in our ring case, if we had two terms, we could add two terms. Okay. Okay. So we this is the construction of T sigma. So we have the constants, we have the variable symbols, and then we build them up by by kind of composing terms, these functions. So, so like iterating our our functions. Um, okay, so now we're going to be talking about the construction of the formulas. formulas. Then I did it with squiggly. Okay. So we're going to talk about the constructions of formulas. So uh, again, this is a, a two-step procedure. In the base case, right? Uh, Okay, so the base case says that, um, so for all two, so there's kind of two things. So uh, let's do it like this. If T and S are terms, then the formula, and I'm going to try and write it with quotes, okay? So then this T is equal to S, okay? This formula here, or let's do it with round, let's do it like this, okay? This is going to be in the formulas. Okay, so the next base case says that for all relations, oh, sorry, Let's do it the same kind of notation. If uh, R is a relation and the area of R, let's say with, it's kind of a bad one, huh? Uh, oh well, okay. With the area of R is equal to N and let's say T1 through TN are terms, then the formula, we'll do it with parentheses, RT1, TN. So this is this just this string. So when I do these parentheses here, I'm just meaning the string. So this is in formulas. Okay? And so, okay, so now, now we have these, these kind of base formulas. And now I'm going to talk about the inductive step. So the inductive step. I guess I need a new new page. Okay, so okay. Well, the, what's what's the first uh, thing it says? It says if uh, p uh, and q are formulas. So this is uh, this means they're in formulas of sigma. Then, uh, then the following will be formulas. The not p, uh, p and q, and p or q will be in. Uh, uh, formulas. Okay. So to continue right now, I need a definition. So as we've constructed the formulas right now, um, we, we, a formula here will look like, will depend on some number of variable symbols. So uh, formulas depending on, so this is, a, this is notation for a formula depending on variable symbols. And what we can do is, uh, these, are, these are called uh, free variables here. Free variables. 
And what one can do is uh, one can bound them, okay? So the free variables are the ones that are not going to be quantified. Okay, so, so for uh, any formula, Uh, the formula let's say uh, let's say the 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 strings Okay, will be um, uh, included. Okay, and so these things need to be uh, free variables. So after this process, they become bounded. So after this quantification process, these guys here become bounded. Okay, so these are bounded. Um, all right, so these have become bounded variables. Okay, so these are the, the free variables, like I said. We've constructed two collections of strings. Okay, the first one, so the, the bounded uh, formulas um, so these are with no free variables and then we've constructed formulas which uh, have free variables first order formulas with free variables free variables. so we're now going to talk about structures So, definition. So let sigma be a signature. So in a sigma structure is a tuple. M, C, R, F, where uh, M is a set, C is a subset of M, of constants. Okay, so let's, so C is a constants, and uh, R is a set of relations. on M, and uh, F is a set of functions on M. Okay, these are such that, um, uh, so with bijections,
okay, that respect the Arides. Okay, so what it is is it's an actual set of, of constants, relations, and functions, okay? And then they're going to match the, the signatures, okay? So um, it's, it's pretty stupid, uh, to be honest. It's, it's, it's all pretty stupid, okay? But the idea is, is that a structure is something that assigns meaning to the, the things in the signature, the, the constants, relations, and functions. So for example... Um, if sigma is sigma group, then a sigma group structure is a set with, uh, you know, a set, let's say, S with, you know, a multiplication operation, uh, an inverse operation, so maybe we'll do it like this. So from S to S. And, uh, okay, and, and we should note that that's it. it. That's all it is, and we should note that S with these operations does not necessarily uh, satisfy the group axioms. Okay, it's just some thing where you can formulate, uh, where you can, you know, interpret the, the formulas, okay? So, um, that's it. Uh, so, we can now give uh, definitions, so theories. Maybe theory shouldn't quite go with semantics, but let's just give a definition. It's still a kind of syntactic thing. A theory, uh, let's say four signature sigma, is just a subset inside the language of four starter formulas. So these are um, these are no free variables. Okay, so uh, now I can define what a, a, a symbol means. So this is kind of a semantic thing, so definition. Uh, let sigma be a signature. Let phi uh, be uh, a first order formula. Okay, and so let m be a sigma structure. Okay, so this thing, this is what we're going to define. We're going to define this symbol. M proves this formula, phi, if and only if, uh, when we interpret Uh, phi in the structure M uh, it returns true okay so sometimes we'll write true is like this true Okay, uh, and so we'll write a definition. Uh, M is a model of a theory, so this is M models phi. Uh, 
if and only if so M models V if and only if uh, M proves or M models V for all V and T. I shouldn't say I shouldn't have said proved. There's a distinction between proved and being true. Um, so so the the kind of the basic example is if T is equal to the theory of groups. Okay, uh, sigma is the signature for groups. Okay, so this contains the eight axioms or so for um, for the theory of groups. Okay, then and G is an actual group. You know, with its operations. Then uh, G is a model for the theory of groups. Okay, so this is a subset, so the language of groups. Okay, so this is kind of the, the basic setup for uh, model theory. Um, thank you for watching.